Welcome to our Sunday evening worship service on a Sunday when we compete against this part of the world's God, which is really sad, because that's really what happens here. Um, folks who are from this part of the world get connected to football and uh, find that uh, it's hard to break the tie. And so tonight we break the tie that uh, binds that by coming together with the tie that binds us together in worship. This evening we're grateful for uh, Bishop Stanley, who is here, Bishop Stanley Smith, who, who is with us from up in Meadville. And he uh, has come down, he's been here all day, he preached this morning down in Newcastle, and uh, now is here with us. And so we welcome you and uh, are saddened by those who are not here, but joyous for those who are. And so it's great to see all of you. A couple of quick announcements and then we'll get rolling. Tomorrow, as part of our chapel service, President Richardson is going to be our speaker, and so I invite you to come back for that. And that begins at 11.40. We'll finish up about 12.10 or 1 o'clock, depending on how long she goes. 1.30? You can get an excuse from class. It's the president. <laughs> um, and so that's coming up. Next Sunday evening, we'll be back in here for worship. Then we have uh, the Super Bowl evening, and that service will be at 5 o'clock, not at 7. So kind of watch for information on that. Then on the 12th of February, which seems a long ways out, but we want to start getting the word out, we are going to be celebrating the 30th annual uh, Wayne Christie Lecture. And we're so excited to be able to do that and have the Christie family come back to be with us. And our speaker that evening is Sean Swarner, who is a Westminster graduate who has done some amazing things. And and brings an amazing message, and so we're excited for him to be here. I had a great conversation with him this week about all the things he's doing, and um, uh, one, of the, one of the things that he was getting ready to do, he lives out in, in uh, Colorado, he was going outside that afternoon to drag tractor tires around the neighborhood, simulating what it would be like to drag a snow, or a sled dog sled. Uh, Adirondack, uh, because he's, here's what he's doing. He's going to the North Pole, and they're going to be hiking into the North Pole, and he's going to be pulling with other men and women uh, their supplies. And so that's coming up in April. But before he gets to April, he's here at Westminster, and he's in New York City. He's going to run the steps of, oh, golly, I never can remember. What is the tall building in Empire State? Well, he's going to run the steps in the, at the Empire State Building. Anyone want to go and be with him for that event? Um, I think that's just amazing. But in my conversation with him, we talked about his life and his journey, and we talked about faith. And boy, what a wonderful conversation we had about how faith moved him through a time in his life when he developed cancer. Not just once, but twice. Two rare forms of cancer was uh, given two weeks to live at one point, that's all before he went off to college. He came to Westminster College, achieved great success. Rob Clement was telling me that they were sitting at lunch one day and he just looked at Rob and he said, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. And Rob looked at him and said, why would you do that? Because I want to. Three or four weeks later, they got together and, and for lunch again and, and he said, I'm going to climb the seven peaks. And so he's done that. So I encourage you to come out, fascinating man, um, and I look forward to hearing his story, his faith story, the message that he has for us, and uh, it's going to be great to have him back in, on campus that evening. And then there's some other things coming up, and we want you to just pay attention to, to all of them. There's a couple retreats for you and some other things. Um, <clears throat> this week coming up, we start with fellowship groups. So if you've been a part of a fellowship group, um, they're gonna be kicking off and rolling. I think this, tomorrow evening they get going again. If you'd like to be part of the gospel choir, they're looking for members always. The handbell choir is looking for members. Um, just all kinds of things that are out there uh, for you, and we encourage you to get involved. Friends, this has been an interesting, the week that's just passed, been an interesting week in our lives. Monday, we recognized and celebrated the birth of Martin Luther King Jr., and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. Then we had the inauguration of the new president. 
and then yesterday the march on Washington. All of these things thrown together for a reason. I haven't figured out what that reason is yet, but for a reason. It calls us all to attention. And so, as we gather and we worship, we give thanks. We give thanks for you being here tonight. And uh, let me offer a prayer, and uh, we'll move forward. Uh, gracious God, we give thanks to you as we gather to worship you on this beautiful evening. <clears throat> we give thanks for the beauty of this day, this weekend, with the warm weather. Help us to uh, enjoy this warm weather, but not get sick because of it. Lord, be with us as we worship you, as we move into the week ahead, as we think about all the events of the week that has passed. Continue to guide and direct us as your children. We ask this in your son's name. Amen. So I'm going to invite you to do something you may be uncomfortable with. This is a fairly large chapel, and some of you are way in the back, and so I'm going to shake up a little bit and ask you to greet one another, pass the, the peace of Christ to one another, and move down front just a little bit, if you would. So. Peace of Christ.
please join me in the call to worship. Lord, we come here with lots of things on our minds, but now we turn up. Help us to put aside our assignments and schedules. Guide us as we worship. Give us the ability to sing, pray, and learn more about you, O God. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Ancient of days, these hours of light are passing into darkness. Thank you for being with us. Let us not forget the joys you put in our lives today. Send us your spirit to fill my memories with comfort and peace as I prepare to worship and a time to, of remembrance of the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Where we have failed to please you, give us, give us for the sake of your son. If we, have, if we have been of help to others, let them give thanks to you. May all night songs praise you as we rejoice in your eternal glory. May we celebrate with you our your whole creation in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I will be reading Exodus chapter 1, verses 7 through 12. But the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful. They multiplied greatly, increased in numbers, and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. Then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come. We must dwell shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous, 
and if war breaks out, will join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they must put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor, and they built Pithom and Ramesses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. So this evening, our guest speaker is Bishop Stanley K. Smith, who comes from St. John's Missionary Baptist Church in Meadville. And our friend uh, Woody Pippins is going to introduce him to you. So Woody, I'd like to invite you to come up. Good evening. It is an honor for me to introduce and present to you our speaker and tell you a little bit about him. He's a pastor of St. John Missionary Full Gospel Baptist Church in Meville, PA. He's a former sergeant in the United States Air Force. He's a graduate with honors of Gannon University in Erie, Pennsylvania. He's a former youth director of the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated of Pennsylvania. He's the founder of His Hands Extended Drug and Alcohol Recovery Group in Erie, Pennsylvania. He's a founder of New Levels CDC Meadville, Pennsylvania, certified pastoral addictions counselor, a former state bishop of Pennsylvania, Full Gospel Baptist Church, Fellowship International. He's the current director of pastors for full gospel over the state of PA in Maryland, DC, Virginia, and Delaware. He's the current director of first assistance in full gospel, and he's an author of these three books, 21 Days of Sanctification, The Power to Get Wealth, and Jewels for the Journey, and more and more and on and on. So it is my pleasure to introduce and present to you our speaker, Bishop Stanley K. Smith. So we're going to pray together before he begins. Great and mighty God, we pray that you will speak to us this evening through your son, Stanley, Bishop Stanley Smith, one who's been given many gifts. gifts. We pray that you will use him. May our ears be open to the message that you want for us, O oh God. We ask this in the name of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening. Certainly we greet you in divine love and in Jesus' joy. We thank God for your presence, but most of all for his, because the Bible tells us in his presence there is fullness of joy. I certainly want to say thank you for allowing me to come. Certainly to uh, Reverend Jim, we greet you and thank you for allowing us to grace your pulpit. And to President uh, Richardson, thank you again for allowing us to be here. To the faculty, staff, students, uh, certainly to my dear friend Elder Henderson and Elder Pippin, thank you for allowing me to come. And to this beautiful choir, can you join me as we celebrate this choir one more time? Weren't they beautiful? I am cognizant and I understand the brevity of the moment simply because the Steelers are playing. And for those of you who are interested, the score is now 0 to 10, and the Patriots, unfortunately, are winning. Yes, I checked the score. <laughs> but we're here to recognize the valiant uh, demeanor of one of our greatest leaders which is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I want to say thank you to the students that have participated in this event. So as we embark upon this intellectual discussion to measure the profound impact of Dr. King and his dream, uh, we desire to engage you on a spiritual and intellectual journey that hopefully will not tickle your fancy but challenge you 
to see things from a perspective that perhaps you and I may not have seen them before. When I think about what's going on in our culture right now, it reminds me of the Dickens tale, A Tale of Two Cities. In 1859, Charles Dickens penned this famous work and spoke about the disparity that exists between London, England, and Paris, France. Dickens' famous opening lines introduce a universal approach of the book regarding the French Revolution and the drama depicted within. He starts his book by saying, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity. It was a season of light, it was a season of darkness. It was a spring of hope. In addition, it was also the winter of despair. We had everything before us, we had nothing before us. We were all going directly to heaven, we were all going directly to hell. In this novel, the author juxtaposes or compares the disparity that existed in his time between London and Paris. And paradoxically, I say that we have disparities also in this country, in America, in 2017. We say this is the land of opportunity, the land of milk and honey. And I contend that Dickens' words could continue to ring for us resiliently in this day, age, and time. Think about it, my friends. In the United States of America, we have the best of times while simultaneously having the worst of times. Who can debate that we live in an age of wisdom while simultaneously we live in an age of foolishness and despair? 151 years after the 13th Amendment that ended slavery in 1865, uh, to, to 2017 in regards to America's racial climate, it is, I contend, the best of times while simultaneously being the worst of times. In 2008, just 143 years uh, after slavery, a black president stepped into the White House. It is the best of times. However, 151 years after slavery, every one in, five, one in 15 American men are in prison, which my friends, is the highest incarceration rate in any ethnic group in, in, in our country. It is the worst of times. I say in 2017, we have great research with AIDS research, my friends. It's the best of times. But however, my friends, according to the Center for Disease Control, black men represents 11% of the population of this country, but 42% of the AIDS infection. I say it's also the worst of times. Who can debate that we have more money and more capital gain but more economic depravity and less economic power? Who can debate that we have more technology only to record the brutality that exists in our country of people groups against people against people? I contend that, my friends, even though we have more venues of education, we have fewer taking those venues. We have more intelligence but less wisdom. It is the best of times. Simultaneously, I say it's the worst of times. So here we sit. 2017, 51 years since Dr. King delivered his I Have a Dream speech on an August day on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in 1963. Year after year, my friends, we recite the eloquence of his speech uh, and begin to state the dream. But my question after all these years uh, is, when are we going to stop dreaming and start seeing the reality of the dream? Perhaps the problem is we're too busy trying to fulfill a 50-year-old dream and we forgot to dream our own dreams. Dr. King's dream, my friends, was for his age and his dispensation. But the God of the universe is not holding you to the standards of the dreams of another. He's holding you to the standards to dream your own dreams. Then what is the answer for the church? What is the role for the church in all that's going on? My friends, if you watched the celebration in Washington, D.C. this weekend of the inauguration of our new president and simultaneously there were riots going on, if you look at what happened on Saturday and then you looked at what happened on Friday and then you look at what happened on Saturday with millions of women marching in D.C., there's disparity. And the intelligent mind needs to ask, why? Many people, without even asking why, debate that it should not happen. So what is the answer for the church? I contend, my friend, according to Acts chapter number 2, 
Verse number 17, it says this, and it shall come to pass in the last days that God shall pour out his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. My question is, when are we going to start fulfilling our dreams and saying no to the devil's nightmare? Some would say, or some would reason, that dreams have already been fulfilled. But I contend that our society is systemically flawed because it empowers groups of people and, my friends, oppresses others. However, an oppressor, my friends, oppressing the oppressed has never been excused by that oppression. What are you saying, Bishop Smith? I'm saying until we recognize the problem, we cannot solve it. Until we admit there's some issues in our country, we'll never address it. Read beautifully by one of our students, the, the text out of Exodus, my friends. The in children of Israel have been relocated to the land of Egypt because of, because of Joseph. And my friends, when they went to Egypt, Joseph prospered the country. But there rose a Pharaoh that forgot about the way the country was prospered. Therefore, the Bible says, therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with burdens. But verse 12 goes on to say, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. When your enemy doesn't understand what God has blessed cannot be cursed, your enemy, my friends, is at the disadvantage. The Bible says to the Christian church, we may be troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. We may be perplexed, but we're not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. My friends, it's time for the church to stop making excuses and begin to rise up and take the right banner that says Jesus Christ is not only Lord and Savior, but if he is in our lives, we must learn to treat each other with dignity and respect, regardless of our views and personal standpoint. If this is true, and I believe it to be true, my friends, my, then you and I must begin to understand that we can defeat the impending foe by our show of unity. We can defeat the impending foe, my friends, by joining together and finding common ground. One of the unique qualities of Dr. King, one of his, his exhibitions of greatness, is that he understood the worth of every living being. He simultaneously understood, my friends, that anything worth living for is also worth dying for. He was a brilliant, what I refer to as a political prophet, much like the prophet John the Baptist, who spoke truth to power. The truth is, my friends, that the Constitution told us we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator by certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What truths are self-evident? That black men and white men and Latino men and Asian men and Native American, all of us have been created by God to fulfill a purpose and a destiny. This is why, my friends, you and I should be excited when people groups begin to rise up I understand some have a problem with the statement black lives matter, but black lives do matter and white lives do matter and female lives and male lives do matter. So I don't have a problem with that statement because I believe my friends that we all have to rise up and understand that God created us all equally. I also say America must admit that the worst act of terrorism that occurred in this country did not happen on September 11th of 2001. But it occurred when foreigners came to this country and stole and imprisoned and enslaved natives that already lived here. We have to admit that the atrocities that happened in this country between 19, 1619 and 1865 when 12.5 million Africans were brought against their will to this country and 1.8 million Africans died in the Atlantic Ocean was an atrocity. We must admit that when justice was done to the Asians and the Latino population, it was done to all of us. Why, you may ask? Why do we need to acknowledge this? Because, my friends, we can't get better 
until we actually realize what already has been done wrong. Some people would like to say, let's stuff it under the carpet and pretend that it doesn't exist. I contend, my friends, disparity will continue until we come to ourselves and humble ourselves and pray to God. Are you trying to make people feel bad, Bishop Smith? No, I'm trying to say to our country, you're a great country. Let's wake up. Let's admit our wrong, our wrongdoing, what has gone wrong, and let's move forward and join together as black people and white people and Asian people and Latino people and realize we can do a great work if we do it in the name of Jesus. America grew strong, and they gained great economic wealth and power because of what they've done to certain people groups. Can we at least admit that? Can we at least admit true history is more important than that which has been taught to us by some who would skew history? Can we at least challenge ourselves as we tote and say the phrase, let's make America great again? Can we at least ask the question, when was again? And if there was an again, who was it great for? If we want to make America greater, then we need to examine the realities that go on in our country and rise up as a group of Christians and say to each other, I support you and what you do as you work together to do that which God would desire you to do. My friends, I believe it's important to begin to tell the truth. It's time of the body of Christ to get an understanding, to develop systems that release people from bondage and not oppress them. I say to you, my friends, and I thank you again for allowing me to come, no more excuses. We have to make up our mind that we're going to be the better people. No more excuses. No more excuses. Why? Because God is on our side. I say to this beautiful young delegation of young people who have uh, decided to matriculate at this great university, no more excuses. You are empowered to do better than generations past. People paid a price for you to do better than we did. No more excuses. We have to teach people to respect one another. No more excuses. You are the electronic generation. No more excuses for abusive videos of beating one another on Facebook. No more excuses of us abusing one another as a people. We have to rise together and work as a team to bring back dignity and respect. Respecting elders and respecting adults. Respecting to our country. Respect to our flag and respect to our heritage and history. I grew up in a time, my friends, when respect was mandatory. And I believe if we can stop excusing bad behavior and, my friends, glean good behavior, it is a beginning point for us to do that which God loves, which is to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Finally, my friends, what are you saying, Bishop, is the solution? I believe the solution is 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. As long as we pompously and arrogantly thump our chest as if God owes us a favor. We will languish in despair. But if we can come to the Lord on our knees, admitting that without him we have nothing and we are nothing, then I believe this country will be great again. Thank you so very much for allowing me to come before you. I bless you. In the name of Jesus. Please continue to stand.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all races and nations, we praise you for your faithful servants who have done justice, love mercy, and walked humbly with their God, for apostles, martyrs, leaders, and saints, and for humble folk whose names have never been in the news, but are recorded in the book of, your, of life. Thanks, O God. Especially this day, we thank you for Martin Luther King, Jr., for his courage and conviction, for his passion for peace, and for his tireless quest of a nation that keeps faith with its promises. For Coretta Scott King and the King family, for the memory of Martin Luther King Sr. and Mrs. King, for Megar Evers, Rosa Parks, James Meredith, Malcolm X, and countless others who stood in front of lines and marched, integrated schools, and restaurants, or sat in buses and refused to move. We give you thanks, O oh God. For nameless multitudes who suffered the torturous of slavery and the, tri the tyranny of oppression, who were beaten, raped, and lynched. And for the nameless multitudes today whose lives are, are stunted and cut short by economic and social structures of br brutality. We grieve and promise to work for justice, O oh God. And for children, women, and men of every race who are denied education, health care, jobs, housing, and hope in our land. We grieve and promise to work for justice, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated. What I'd like to do at this point is to uh, share prayers for the community. And the way we would typically do this is to see if you have any prayer requests that you would like us to offer this evening. Yes. Audrey, is that in West or in Virginia? Okay, others? Yes. Okay. What is her name? Tony One more time. Tony Anderson. Tony Anderson? Is it a, a guy or a girl? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Others? Yep. Yep. Yes. Tyler had surgery and recovery is difficult. Others, yes, yeah, Seth. Lee family. Others? Yes. Your brother's going to start treatment. Thanks, Makai. I saw another hand. Yes. Okay. Do you want to share his name or her name? Ryan. Okay. Any others? Dart.
Scott is a Westminster grad who uh, is a pastor in Wisconsin who is um, struggling with a major, major health issue right now. Just diagnosed. Treatment has just started. So, Any others? Okay, please join me in prayer. God of the living from whom all blessings flow, we welcome a new week with thanksgiving because you have cared for us through this day and through this weekend and the week that uh, we have been back on campus. Wherever you send us this week, whomever we meet, be it in our walk across campus, in the classroom, or at night when we settle down in our dorms, or our townhouses, or apartments and homes, may we see you in their face. Grant us wisdom, what you give us, and generosity to share what we have received. Fill us with spirit, your spirit, O God, so that we may show courage and kindness and a sense of humor in the face of the day, this day's hardships. May we be faithful as we step up as your children and respect and love one another. Lord, on this night, we ask that you would hear our prayers, prayers that have been spoken, prayer requests spoken. We pray for Grandma Audrey in Virginia, who's in the hospital. Lord, surround her with family and friends, a great cloud of witnesses. We give thanks to you for skilled physicians who will care for her and incredibly considerate and helpful and skilled nurses. Lord, we pray for Tony Anderson out in Kansas who is missing. May you help those who are searching for her to find her. May you be with her during this time of of concern and separation from family and friends. We pray, Lord, for her safe return. We pray for parents who are ill, a friend's parents, or perhaps even our own. We pray for Tyler's surgery as the recovery has been difficult so far. Be with him, O God. Here are prayers for the Lee family who are struggling to have the ability to pay bills and to take care of the things they need to take care of. Grant them, O Lord, the peace that they need. Lord, we pray for Micaiah's brother as he begins treatment. May this be a journey that's filled with grace and peace for him. We pray for his health and his healing. Be with her family, his family, and friends as he moves through this time. We pray for Ryan, a cousin who has just been diagnosed with MS. Lord, we pray for the miracle of medicine to be able to work in Ryan's body and allow him to continue to do the things that he is able to do and to to do them well. We pray for Scott Hauser, a friend in Wisconsin who has been part of this community for so many years. Oh God, we pray for healing for him. We pray for his young family, that you would surround them with a sense of love and comfort and help them to know that that you are present in this journey they're going through. And Lord, as we move through this new week, we can't help but be reminded of the week that has passed. We're so grateful to you for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and for all that he taught. May we hear his words and respond to his words. May we let the dream be a new dream, a dream that begins to take forth. Lord, we think about inaugurations of new presidents and the uncertainty that comes with it. So we pray for guidance for all who are elected into leadership roles. We pray that they would look to you, that you would be their guide, 
in all the decisions that they make. And Lord, we think about the Women's March yesterday and are reminded how life for many is difficult and there's hurt and there's pain in our world. So help each of us to do our part, to hear your calling on our lives, to respond with faith and with hope and with love. So now show us, O God, ways that we might serve you as we move through this day and through the night, so that when we wake tomorrow morning that we would live for you. In the name of Jesus, the Son, our Lord and Savior, amen. awesome God take you out into the world. May you take the message of Bishop Stanley Smith and live that message. May you take the love of God and share it with your neighbors, with your friends, with those you meet on the way back to your dorm tonight, for those that you'll meet in the cafeteria tomorrow. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.